So in breaking news, the Baltimore Ravens just added another defensive lineman, but not just any defensive lineman, somebody that Ravens fans should be very familiar with. Let's read the report from Mike Garofalo. He said, the Ravens are signing veteran defensive lineman Chris Wormley to their practice squad after working him out today. So it says, Wormley, who was a third round pick in 2017. So he got here like right before the Lamar era started. But anyway, he is third round pick in 2017 and he returns to the franchise that drafted him. You know what's crazy? I remember Chris Wormley. He was always a, a solid player. Uh, it wasn't flashy, anything like that, but he was a solid player. And I, I remember when we traded him during, I forgot what draft it was, but it was like maybe like four years ago, something like that. But we traded him to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So he went over there for a little while. So he was over there chilling in Pittsburgh and whatnot, and he was doing his thing over there. But I guess it didn't work out. Not that it didn't work out, but yeah, I guess maybe it was a numbers game or something like that. But he was a free agent. Raven said, hey, come through. So now Chris Wormley is back. Now, um, I, I did see where Jeff Zrebic, he talked about it was a very interesting reunion for the Baltimore Ravens, them making this move. And a, a lot of us, just from seeing them make this move, we wondered, hmm. Huh, What's going on? I don't necessarily feel like defensive line has been a problem because we got a Matabike who has been doing this thing. We got a Michael Pierce. We got Broderick Washington. You got Brent Urban. Like, hmm, what's this for? But a Ravens fan did ask Jeff, like, what's, what's, the, what's going on with this? And Jeff Zrebic responded. He said, well, not every move, not every signing means that the Baltimore Ravens are looking for help in a particular area. And that makes sense. It's one of those things where it's like, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. I already know how the comment section is going to look, though. Ravens fans, I know Team Kimmy Clean going to be in the comment section like, we don't need another defensive lineman. We need to be signing offensive linemen ASAP. Now, look, I ain't mad at that at all. And Harbaugh's comments today about being Cleveland for lately. <laughs> that might be something y'all might be mad at, but I ain't mad at y'all saying that uh, at all. I get it because the offensive line has been – Ooh, even though, like, I did see one of my guys, he said, hey, the Ravens offensive line, they only gave up three sacks in two games. This offensive line, there's so many people complaining about, talking about it, whatnot. While that is true, because Lamar got sacked twice yesterday and he got sacked once against the Kansas City Chiefs, I believe. While that is true, that doesn't tell the whole story. Because that is technically right. It's technically true. But we saw this offense. If Lamar Jackson wasn't back there, then a lot of other quarterbacks, they, they would be sacked like probably like 10 times. And honestly, as sad as it sounds, it's not even an exaggeration. It's been rough. Had we not had a Lamar Jackson, and, and this, this is something we could actually say for years. We have been able to say this for years. Had we not had a Lamar Jackson behind Ravens offensive lines, uh, not line, behind Ravens offensive lines, uh, then there would have been a lot more issues that got highlighted. But... Because of his ability, he covers a lot up with the offensive line. But this ain't about the offensive line. We're talking about the Baltimore Ravens bringing back a familiar face in Chris Wormley. Wormley, welcome back. But how did that spot on the practice squad open up for Chris Wormley to take it? Well, we're getting ready to talk about that next. While we got a familiar face who returned to the Baltimore Ravens, a very, very familiar face has left the Baltimore Ravens yet again. But I'm happy for him because he gets to go back home tyler huntley who was an undrafted rookie free agent out of utah that the baltimore ravens signed um he uh left he stayed with the baltimore ravens for a couple of years and then he left went and signed with the browns this past offseason but then he did not make the roster the browns cut him so he was a free agent and Ravens, they looked at their backup QB situation. They said, oh, Josh Johnson, okay, cool. They looked at the practice squad. They said, Devin Leary, okay, cool. But then they was like, you know what? We want that old thing back. So they hit up Tyler Huntley. They said, what's up, big head? You want to come through? And Tyler Huntley said, oh, yeah, sure. That's home for me. So they signed Tyler Huntley to their practice squad. But it did not last long. Because if we go down to Miami, you see Tua Tagovailoa. He has been dealing with concussions. He got a lot of concussions over the years, but he said he ain't retiring. So I ain't going nowhere. I'm trying to play. All right, cool. That's your decision. It is what it is. Now, um, in Tua's absence, the Dolphins were like, hey, we're going to roll with, uh, I think his name is Skylar Thompson, I believe. We're going to roll with him. 
But the Dolphins say, hold on, wait, wait, wait. We need just a bit more. We got to try to stay ready so we ain't got to get ready. So they sign Tyler Huntley off the Baltimore Ravens practice squad today. They signed him off their practice squad today. So Tyler Huntley is officially going from the Baltimore Ravens to the Miami Dolphins. Um, so good for him. Good for him. Like, look, I, I, I want to see it, man. I want to see Tyler Huntley play. Like, no offense to Skyler, but I, I, I really want to see Tyler Huntley play with a, a Tyreek Hill. With a Jalen Waddle. Now he's going to have to put, 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 some, put some more uh, funk on that ball. Like, straight up, man. He got to put some more on it. We know Tyler Huntley, he would throw he would throw some pretty ones, but they would be a little bit short and whatnot. He just need to put some more zip on it a little bit and whatnot. He, he'll get it. He'll get it. But I, I really want to see him play with those weapons. And then eventually, maybe, possibly, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. as well. But shout out to Tyler Huntley becoming a Miami Dolphin. And he's back home because he's from South Florida. Now, we, of course, dropped our post-game thoughts video just a couple of hours ago. Um, and there were some things that I missed talking about from that game so we'll just address them here justin tucker justin tucker um i saw a statistic that said in justin tucker his last eight field goals from past 50 yards from, so if the field goes longer than 50 yards justin tucker is one out of eight that's a big yikes because had it been like a one-off oh justin tucker missed a field goal from over 50 yards all right, cool. Had it even been two? Oh, Justin Tucker missed two field goals that were from over 50 yards. All right, cool. We don't like it, but cool. But one out of his last eight. That's concerning, man. It, it really is. No matter how you try to slice it, no matter which way you try to put it, that is very concerning because Justin Tucker, he's known as the greatest kicker of all time. Most accurate kicker of all time. Legatron. Automat Tuck. Like, he got all these different nicknames, but we, we almost feel like we can't use those nicknames right now because things have been off. We saw last week against the Kansas City Chiefs, missed a field goal. We saw this week against the Raiders, he missed a field goal. And one of the, the, the worst part, the parts that made it worse for me was Carlson on the Raiders he was making them from past 50. And then we see Harrison Bucker from the Chiefs. He kicked that super long field goal to win the game. And then just looking around the league. I'm looking around the league watching some of the other games. And I'm seeing these field goal kickers from past 50. Drilling them. Getting these kicks with the power and the accuracy. I'm like, man, what happened to our guy? What happened to Justin Tucker? So that, that's something that's very just, I don't know, man. It, I am worried about it. And I think, you know what's crazy though? Ravens fans, this is not a new conversation. The John Harbaugh conversation, that is not a new conversation. And what's sad too is the Justin Tucker conversation is on the same boat because Ravens fans, a lot of them have been talking about that too. Is Justin Tucker still the Justin Tucker? Because he's been missing quite a bit. Even taking away, taking away the ones that he got blocked. Because those count as misses, but to me, they aren't really misses because he ain't even had a chance to kick them. But he ain't been the, the Justin Tucker that we used to. I would always say with Justin Tucker, we are so spoiled, man. We are extremely spoiled as Ravens fans. Why? Because we're just so used to him getting every kick, making all these kicks. So when he missed one, we're like, whoa. But recently, he's just been missing more and more. Baltimore Ravens right now are in some very unfamiliar territory. They are sitting at 0-2, and, and that is ugly. They have opportunities, and they've been close in both of those games. They have come right down to the wire, and they are Isaiah likely inches away from making plays in both games that would have put Ravens in tie-in position, but we, of course, know how both of those plays went uh, and then how a lot of other aspects of the game went, too. So with Baltimore Ravens, they have started 0-2 four other times. And get this, this should make you really excited. Uh, and not only missed the playoffs those years, but also did not finish with a winning record. Now, I'm not here to say that the Baltimore Ravens are going to miss the playoffs because honestly, I don't think that they will. I don't think they'll miss the playoffs. 
Uh, I, why, even with this record the way that it is, even all the conversations that we done had about this current football team, right now I do not think that they'll miss the playoffs. And I know to a lot of people that may sound crazy. I do think some changes need to be made and some significant changes need to be made. Ravens need to make some adjustments, both small and big. But we don't need this happening. We don't need that stat continuing. Records are meant to be broken, uh, but so we need this record. We need this statistic we need this to be the year where it doesn't end up being true. Because if it does, oof. <laughs> ooh, we got to have some conversations, my friends. Let me tell y'all, man. Um, After the loss against the Kansas City Chiefs, we got a good amount of questions like we always do. But after the loss against the Raiders, my goodness, I don't know how we're going to fit all of these questions into one week. Like, we got the game against the Cowboys Sunday at 4. We're going to find a way, though, because we got a lot of emails. We got a lot of messages on Patreon. Like, y'all y'all ready to just go off, and y'all showed it in a major way. But we're going to try our best to make sure we make it happen. So... Without further ado, let's get into these questions from you all. If you would like to be part of this, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or if you're a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can send it directly on Patreon. Make sure you check out the description. The merch store is down below in the description. Everything is down below in the description. I love you all. I appreciate y'all. Let's get into it. First question came from my guy, Plex. He said... We had con concepts of a plan. I know Eric wanted to go younger on the offensive line, but it's not looking like the plan was executed properly. Roger needs to start at right tackle. I agree for sure. He looked better than Patrick McCarry, but Baltimore Ravens, I mean, you know what they did. He said he's shown that he can hold his own. We can't keep the training wheels on him forever. He, he's had to go against Chris Jones and Max Crosby. He'll have Michael Parsons next week. That's a tough stretch of games for any rookie, but it's the NFL. That's what he's going to have to deal with week in and week out. I was one that always wondered why we never started Makari. We pay him like a starter. He should be out there like one. I've come to realize why he wasn't out there. <laughs> That was rough, man. And Falele, he's like that kid on the Pee Wee football team that's really big. Typically, he goes by Big Daddy, Bubba, Big Baby, something like that. He's a kid that will have all the potential in the world, but just doesn't have a mean bone in his body. He's like Mikey off recess. <laughs> What are you doing, man? Uh, like, like if you want to write poetry and doodle, that's cool. Don't, don't do them like that. And ain't nothing wrong with those things at all. But anyway, he said, if you want to write poetry and doodle, that's cool. So if you want to be an artist or a music artist, or if he want to write songs, they make a lot of money. Anyway, uh, he said, but on the football field, he said, you can't do that on the football field. On the football field, you need to come with it. As a team, I don't think we got any better from our last year. Uh, we upgraded running back, but our offensive line is worse. So that's a wash. That's true. We, we we all knew that going in. With the way that they did offensive line, yeah, we all knew that going in. It, they did not upgrade it whatsoever. Anyway, he also said, um, we didn't improve our wide receivers. That's true because they, they kept it. It's pretty much been every, all the same people, uh, just minus Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, he said, defensive line is the same, which I have no problem with them. They have been balling, so that's cool, right? Pass rushers improved, but it's all the same guys. Young guys are coming along. They're looking good, so shout out to them. Yeah, shout out to Dafe Away. Shout out to uh, David Ajabo, even Kyle Vanoy. He's doing his thing, too. But anyway, he said our secondary is pretty much the same. We added Nate Wiggins. It did. Don't forget TJ Tampa. Don't forget Ardarius Washington. The reason I say Ardarius Washington is because he ain't really played last year that much. So he's there, too. Uh, Arthur Millette is out right now, so he'll be back soon. Um, but, yeah. Uh, he said, I know he's there as far as Nate Wiggins, so speedy recovery to him. Uh, but, like, it's the same team. We had a good team. Other teams got better. We pretty much rolled out the same unit, and that's not going to cut it. I, I wouldn't say it's the same team. I see what you're saying, but Ravens lost a lot of people. They lost a whole lot of people. Jadavion Clowney ain't here. He ain't here. He was on that defensive line. He's gone. Geno Stone, who was balling when they had him at free safety, dropping back, covering the field. He's gone. Patrick Queen, who was doing his thing at inside lot, he's gone. So we not only Gus Edwards, J.K. Dot, we not only lost a lot of players, but we lost a lot of significant players. And we ain't starting out so high. Anyway, he said, um, we lost another winnable game. Who does that fall on? John, Doc, Rivers, Harbaugh? Oof, oof. Still getting chances based on a championship from over a decade ago. Wow. What a way to start us off. Next question came from Lynetta from B More. She said, hey, Graven, how are you and the family? We are doing great. I appreciate you, Lynetta. She said, it's been a while. What is going on with John Harbaugh not starting Ben Cleveland? 
He knows 77 is not a good protector for Lamar Jackson, but you keep him in there. It's like John wants Lamar to get hurt. Put your pride to the side and protect your quarterback. What do you think? Thank you for all you do, and I appreciate you. No, I appreciate you. We don't appreciate what John Harbaugh is doing with Lamar Jackson and with his Baltimore Ravens offensive line. It is the craziest. Again, with Ben Cleveland, he I, I don't know what he did. What's, what's crazy, though, is that they will ask him about Ben Cleveland. Um, we will wonder why Ben Cleveland is not starting. John Harbaugh will say this, that, and the third. But it's like if Ben Cleveland is so bad, if he's just so not good, if he's not better than Fire Lele, if he's just because we never see him at all, why is he still on the team? Next question, well, more so common, he was just straight up, came from my guy Brian, who's a patron, he also said, John's got to go, I can't take it anymore, just like that. Next question came from another team, keeping clean page. My guy Derek, he said, "Engraving, what up, man? Hey, instead of calling it a revenge tour, let's call it a trying to get back on track tour. Because <laughs> yes. we way, we not even on a train right now. We not, don't even forget the tracks. We ain't even on a train right now. But anyway, he said, uh, the Ravens are not a good football team. This year, still my squad, but they are not a good team, man. Let's just face it, the receivers are not great. The O-line is, is not great. Uh, the tight ends, it can't be a two-man show, just a one-man show. Todd Monken is just having a hard time incorporating that in. This isn't a Greg Roman offense at all where multiple tight ends thrive. This is a receiver-based offense where wide receivers are the first option, then the tight ends and running backs. Likely your Andrews have to go. This isn't a two-man show. See, he's saying they, they need to, like, get going, not that they have to leave. Uh, he said Derrick Henry is not a fit for our offense. It should have been Saquon. Your thoughts? Oh, well, let's go piece by piece, and we'll just go in reverse order. He said Derrick Henry is not a good fit for offense. It should have been Saquon. Saquon would have been a much better fit than Derrick Henry for offense, and we were talking about it uh, in the stream during the game. Um, Oh, we were talking about Alvin Kamara, how he would have been a perfect fit for Ravens offense. Uh, He would not be a tail for what the Baltimore Ravens are getting ready to do. Like if Alvin Kamara is on the field, you can run or you can pass. But the thing with Alvin Kamara, um, the thing with more so with Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley wanted to get paid. He wanted to get paid the top running back dollar. Baltimore Ravens were never going to do that. They were were never going to do that. And, I mean, we all knew that, but... We, he wanted to get paid top dollar So yeah They weren't going to do that at the running back position They may do it at the other position but running back certainly not uh, They've been wanting, waiting And I and Derrick Henry for the longest um, And Derrick Henry with The Baltimore Ravens offensive line I, I think he He's not a bad fit But there are better fits But with Derrick Henry they can get it going They showed yesterday they just got to do things differently. I, I did like how when they started really incorporating him, they wanted him to get off to a running start to where they not just handed it off to him and then it's a, a, a tackler in the backfield, it's a defender in the backfield, grabbing his legs and taking him down. They started to see, hold up, let's do something different. So they started tossing on the ball. They started pitching him the ball. And that allowed him to get a running start, and then he was able to get more yards that way. And he also stayed way on the left side too. Um, he also said the tight ends. Oh, likely Andrews, they got to get going. This isn't a two-man show. So he's talking about how with um, Todd Munkin, he hasn't been able to get both of them going. It's not a two-man show. It's, just, it's, just, it's one or the other. It's not, it hasn't been where both of them get going. I don't know what to say about that because this is both of their second year in this offense. This is Todd Munkin's second year working with them. This is Lamar's second year working with them in this offense. So yeah, we're we just waiting. We're just waiting and hoping that something ends up coming through. Uh, he said, this is a receiver-based offense where wide receivers are the first option, then the tight ends and running backs. Mm, that's interesting right there. But th- when we look at the game, like look at yesterday, Zay Flowers. He was the first option for sure. <laughs> he is a wide receiver. Uh, Rashad Bateman, I don't think he is one of the first options at all. He's, he's not. I think it goes Zay Flowers. Uh, whichever tight end is out there, the Mark Andrews or Isaiah Likely, if they both out there, then yeah, um, then Justice Hill, throw Justice Hill in the mix too. Uh, then maybe Rashad, but well, yeah, depending on which running back it is, if it's Justice Hill, if it's Derrick Henry, whichever, but then you put Rashad Bateman. I think Rashad Bateman, when he's on the field, probably like the last option. And I'm not saying that as a diss or anything, that's just the way that it seems the this offense goes. This next question came from my guy Keontae. He said, this definitely pains me to say, but Marlon and Mark are gone or need to be. Sell them to the highest bidder. I'm not this guy. Marlon is my most favorite corner in the league, but he is being picked on every game, and Mark is just not a part of the game plan. Go ahead and get us a veteran right guard. Oh, you cold-blooded, boy. 
I still I tell you I wouldn't I wouldn't trade Mark Andrews not this year maybe in the off season but I wouldn't trade him this year I just I just think and, and I get I know likely could be tight end one he should be tight end one he should be the first tight end in my opinion I think Mark is still dealing with something too he just does not look all the way back yet I don't think he is um, but I wouldn't trade him this year um, now uh, the part about Marlon Humphrey. Uh, Marlon, you know what's funny? I was talking all my trash in the in the stream yesterday about Marlon. Cause everybody, oh, Marlon's watch. He this, he that. Then he went and messed around and got a pick. I said, how about that? What about that? But then he he, yeah, he had a pretty rough. Well, he he had an interesting game. Uh, Brandon Stevens, he had a rough game. Marlon Humphrey, well, against Devontae Adams, it wasn't too bad. Uh, but Devontae Adams was the only receiver who was catching stuff. Uh, but Marlon Humphrey, yeah, he had he had a rough game. The secondary just had a rough game, man. They all did. It's, it's it's tough, man. But I do think Marlon, in my opinion, he's definitely on his way out. When it when will it be though? Because with them drafting Nate Wiggins, that's why I say Marlon's on his way out. Um, because Marlon knows the game. He knows the business. He gets it. Now I wonder if he would be willing to convert to safety. That would be something. Next question came from my guy Marlon. He said, "Fire John Harbaugh." Wow. If he refuses to help out the team by retiring, let's force his hand and fire him. I'm so tired of scared, ha scared ball. He goes into a shell and cries in the corner, and he plays the game in so he doesn't play to win. He plays not to lose. That's not the first time I've heard that before from Ravens fans about John Harbaugh that he doesn't play when he plays not to lose. Now, when you think about all them two point conversions, though, remember those? Like, I don't know about that, but anyway. Uh, he said, uh, after Raiders scored that touchdown, he could clearly see how hot their offense was. What does he do? Run, run, run. When is when is the halfback draw still a thing? Uh, two, second and 15 or whatever it was, and good old scared ball shows up again. Instead of passing and trying to win, I'm so, oh, I think, are you talking about the second? There was a second and 19 late in the game, and, yeah, they called a draw. And I said, what? A draw play? Or was it first and twenty? It was one. It was either first. It was either first and twenty or second and nineteen. And they called. I said, "Oh my!" God. But anyway, uh, he said, uh, "Instead of passing and trying to win, I'm so mad, man. Skateball needs to go. Bill Belichick, who has six Super Bowls, is sitting out there. No excuses time for Harbaugh to go. He is all. He is old milk." Uh, and he, milk expires eventually, and he has reached his expiration date. Mike McDonald should have been a head coach of this team. I haven't been a, a fire hardball guy. I think he has been a good coach, but I'm tired of watching him play not to lose because he's scared. Luckily, Steve has already been willing to fire hardball once, so hopefully he will step over EDC to make this happen. I'm sorry for the rant. I'm just mad. I'm just tired of watching our team play not to lose rather than play winning football. He said, why is the halfback draw still a thing? Sometimes it works though, so hey, it ain't all bad. So, um, but yeah, I, it, that is something about the Ravens, and, and I, I think one of the biggest ways that you can see that they play not to lose is when you look at that record uh, that they're the team that leads the league in losing games when they are up by seven points or more in the fourth quarter. So that tells you that exact like hey, they the team that that they play not to lose. They don't play to win. And, again, we know what, what uh, Mike Tomlin said years ago. Ravens don't play for a full four quarters. They don't play a full four quarters. So, yeah. Anyway, continuing. He says, something you always bring up is Harbaugh always being uh, shooting the team in the foot when he removes the hot hand off the field. This was a big problem for J.K. Dobbins. Now it's becoming a problem with Zay Flowers. Both in the Chiefs and Raiders games, Zay is killing it in the first half. In the second half, he doesn't get more than two passes thrown his way. And after cooling off, I really hate to be the fire Harbaugh guy, but, man, I just can't stand scared coaching. Always been uh, trying to win, like, instead of doing halfback draw in second and 15, knowing how hot their offense is. Right? Not try throwing up Zay Flowers or likely or Andrews, somebody. To me, every time I see the draw play, that is a sign of I surrender. Yes, I agree. I agree. Um, not every time. I, no, so I take that back. I don't, not every time, but it just it depends on the situation. It all depends on the situation. Sometimes you can look at different plays that are called by your team, in this case, Baltimore Ravens, and they can make it look, oh, they, they, playing, they playing the punt. And I mean, you can see it around the league too. Oh, they, they playing for a punt. And, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. He said, and if Harbaugh actually would have called throwing plays and we still don't get the first down, we at least have more time left. My biggest gripe right now is stop coaching scared. He said, you know what's fun? It's funny how Jim Harbaugh has a much worse team than John and still comfortably beat the Raiders. Uh, also, I was <laughs> – hey, maybe because he got the, all them old Ravens. And maybe they, 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 them old Ravens, they know what's up, man. They, they, they say, hold up, we, we going to play like a Raven over here. 
well not old uh, but anyway uh he said uh yeah, he still beat the beat the Raiders comfortably. Also, I was panicking about our defense week one, but man, it's week two, and I don't want to get to week ten saying the same thing. We are in win now mode. We don't have time to give it give it uh, to the secondary. They allowed Minshew to complete thirty four for thirty eight passes. Honestly, I thought our pass rush is doing great. Also, Kyle Vannoy is a beast. Hold up, thirty four for thirty eight. That 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 got to be inaccurate, right? He said secondary was bad, the pass rush was good, special teams was bad. Come on, JT and Jordan Stout got to step up, man. That punt was horrible. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. It was really bad. I think it was like a twenty yard punt, something like some crazy like that. I, I forgot what it was, but it was something that was really bad. Let me real. I, I know Minshew had a day yesterday. I, I know he did his thing against the Ravens. I, I I know that, but let me see exactly what his passing was. Um, so give me three seconds. One, two, three. Boom. Pulled it up. There we go. All right. Gardner Minshew in yesterday's game against the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, he went thir oh, 30 for 38. Okay. I know I, I know it wasn't 34 for 38, but it's th 30 for 30. I mean, bad enough. 276 yards. One touchdown. One interception. So shout out to Marlon Humphrey. Thank you. But yeah, just uh, we couldn't stop him. Like, look at that. They're, they're running. They ran 17 times for 27 yards. They averaged 1.6 yards per run. 17 times for 27 yards. So we were doing our thing with run defense. Ravens were doing it. They were making it happen. But pass defense, 30 catches for 276 yards. Devontae Adams, 9 catches for 110 yards. Brock Bowers, 9 catches for 98 yards. Jacoby Myers, 4 for 29. But, man, their playmakers made plays. Ours didn't. Oh, well. They some of them did, but they just didn't make enough. Next question came from my guy Kenny from B Moore. He said, "Engraving." I was sitting back thinking about this. You know how we crap out every single time we get the number one seed. What if we don't get the number one seed and we play straight through the playoffs without taking a break and not losing our mojo? Maybe we can go all the way this season. What do you think? Love what you do. Please keep it coming. Much blessings to you and yours. And I'm pretty sure. Oh, he. Oh, yep, yep, yep. He sent that the day before the game. And it's funny, he used the word mojo. He said, uh, what if we could play straight through the playoffs without taking a break and not losing our mojo? That was the exact word that Lamar Jackson used. He said, we got to get our mojo back. So we, like, <laughs> I bet my guy Kenny wishes he could unsend this. Now, I, I, I would still love for it to happen, but I know he wishes he could unsend this because yesterday, I don't think nobody think about playoffs right now. But I, again, I, like I said earlier, I do still think it could happen. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you. He said, love what you do. Please keep it coming. Much blessing to you and yours. And hope the fam is good. Appreciate that a, a lot. But yeah, with the number one seed, um, I would still like the Ravens to get the number one seed. I, I just don't feel like there there are any. Didn't, there's no excuses when you got the number one seed. Yeah, you could have a bye week or whatever. But no, you just got to be on point. So Ravens just got to do a better job of preparation. But they need to start working on that now in the regular season, so they can even have conversations about the postseason. Because right now, we can't talk about it. Now, this next question came from my guy, Kedrick, and he sent this before the game, so a day before the game, but listen to what he said. This is crazy. He said, what's going on, Engraven? As a fellow YouTube creator, I know how much work it takes to put out cons consistent, high-quality content, so I appreciate the hard work you put into your channel. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. You got, you got to send me your, your, your channel on Patreon. So just send me a message with your channel so I, I can look at it. Uh, he said, my question is this. I know this may be an unpopular opinion. Again, this was before the game. This was before the, the day before the game. So this is not a knee-jerk reaction by him. This is not something that he's, oh, well, the Ravens lost. So no, this was before the game. He said, I know this may be an unpopular opinion, but do you think it would make sense to look to trading both? To trading both Marlon Humphrey and Mark Andrews at the trade deadline. It's pretty clear they won't be signing another long-term contract here. That part is true. That's true. I do agree with that, and I, I, I see that same thing that you're seeing with that. He said, uh, and we could both gain quality depth at other positions or gain draft capital and free up a lot of cap space in this upcoming season. You you thinking like a GM? You thinking business minded? I, I I see it. I see exactly what you're saying. The way you explained it was perfect. Um, and yet with that, I I mm, that would ooh that would be something. They would have trade Marlon Humphrey before the trade deadline. My y'all know my preference is always keeping everybody. Uh, uh, that that that's always my preference. Um, but let's let's see how things go these next couple of games. Let's see how Marlon Humphrey is uh, with because if you trade him away. 
Uh, and again, it's going to happen eventually, whether they cut him or trade. It's going to happen eventually when Marlon Humphrey is not on the Baltimore Ravens. And I think it, it, it happens either this offseason, I think this offseason, or next. But I, I think it's going to be this offseason at the latest. So it could happen during the season, but I think this offseason at the latest. But um, with Marlon Humphrey, uh, if you get rid of him, well, and when you do, but if you get rid of him, Snake Wiggins uh, is Brandon Stevens for this year because he's not signed to a long-term deal. This is last year. So it's Nate Wiggins this year, Brandon, Steve, uh, Brandon Stevens, uh, TJ Tampa, Jalen Armour Davis, Arthur Millette when he comes back, uh, Ardarius Washington. So, I mean, you could get by with that, especially if your pass rush is nice and like that. But would you r r much rather have him all in Humphrey there for that versatility, keep him around for this year, or would you rather trade him? You did talk about getting uh, draft capital, uh, getting cap relief, getting all of that stuff. So with with the cap, I wouldn't worry about the cap during the season. After the season, when you got to be cap compliant and all that, then I oh okay, worry about it then. Um, but I, I would rather keep him. I would rather keep him. I know yesterday wasn't the best, but I, I would rather keep him and just hope that he turns it around. But you got time to see if he turns it around. Now with Mark Andrews, y'all already know how I feel about that. It's it's the same thing with him. I would much rather have both him and Isaiah likely uh, at the same time on the, both both those tight ends. But you also got Charlie Kohler. And have y'all been noticing how the Baltimore Ravens, they've been, Charlie Kohler been out there a lot more than he used to be. A whole lot more than he used to be. So I don't know. There's something to just look at. So maybe, maybe the Baltimore Ravens, they might be thinking along the same lines that you are. Anyway, he also said they are two of my favorite players, so I would hate to see them go in the short term. But I feel it would possibly be the best for long-term health of the franchise. Oof. Oh, okay, he sent me his YouTube. Okay, I see. He sent it to me. All right, appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I, he said, what do you think? Thanks again. No, thank you, man. I appreciate you. Ooh, when you put it like that, because uh, again, you think in business-minded, and I, I love that and I respect it. Um, that would be a very, very tough football decision to make, but depending on what they could get back, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be a decision that ends up being made sooner or later, I think sooner, uh, definitely this offseason for both. For both And those are like Two heavy hitters For the Baltimore Ravens They have been for years And they're loved By the Baltimore Ravens By fans and stuff uh, Even though fans Like I know uh, With Marlon Humphrey After the game well, It got ugly out there But um, I do think That that is on the way With both him And Mark Andrews uh, Just being gone Whether it's via trade Via cut Whatever it might be And that's gonna be One of them tough decisions But it's one of them decisions That I think we all see coming